my background in art. Um, really don't have a lot of background as far as education or anything of that nature. I just uh, sat down one day out of pure boredom and started doodling with pencils and came up with some portraits of grandkids and things like that and said, hey, this is kind of fun. Allows me to focus on something other than all the stuff I used to focus on when I worked for a living and had fun with it. So I kept going. You know, as a kid, I did a lot of doodling. Uh, and when I was uh, probably in my late teens, early 20s, I went to photography school for a year, found out I can't really see, but I really learned to enjoy black and white uh, photography. And of course, that uh, shows up in a lot of the graphite work I do now. So. Well, like I said, graphite kind of came out of uh, the, the enjoyment of black and white photography. Pencils are cheap, it made it easy to do. Uh, I understood those more than I understood uh, other uh, color art mediums at the time and just started working in them. Uh, these, a couple of the examples, I obviously like uh, photorealism. And uh, I did this one, I think, first, and then I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun to do a series of, of uh, drawings, uh, people at work, people with hands at work, is what I call it, series. And this one, of course, is a potter at his wheel, pretty aged hands, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, shine on the hands from the liquid and so on. Uh, don't know which one I did next. I think it was probably the, um, either the uh, barista or the guitarist down here on the other end. Uh, barista, I, I like doing shiny objects a lot. So it's kind of fun to do the reflections and the steam and the, the contrast in that. Plus a couple of my kids were baristas at one time when they were in college and they enjoyed doing that. Uh, Mama's hands. I was kind of thinking jobs when I started this, but being a mom's a pretty significant uh, job. And in this case, this is my niece and her youngest of four daughters, eight and down. So uh, that was kind of special to us. Uh, this one's the first pastel one I think I did in the, in the hand series. Um, and that's my niece's husband, who is a welding instructor. And he said, don't ever tell my students that I did this without gloves on. <laughs> so and that was kind of fun, but I enjoyed the contrast and the colors in that one. Uh, the guitarist, that was another attempt at photorealism and, and showing a musician at work. And then the football one, uh, that's one I started actually when I was doing another show and I was sitting back drawing while I was uh, at that show. So there's a few more in the, in the series that aren't here. But, uh, it's been kind of a fun, fun thing to work at. That was an interesting transition. It came about because I was asked to do a graphite portrait of a Rottweiler dog, Rottweiler puppy. And I started it in graphite and said, this just doesn't have enough contrast. It just isn't gonna look good because it's almost all black. I wasn't getting the reflections I wanted. The red above the eyes wasn't showing. And I thought, well, let me see what I can find. I had colored pencils, messed with that a little bit, didn't like it. Uh, and I had worked with some pastel pencils in a 10-week art class I took years ago. And so I went down to the local shop and bought some pencils that I thought would cover that, and it came out really nicely. And I thought, well, that was fun, and it went pretty quickly. So we kept playing with pastels. Um, trying to think which one. This is probably the earliest one you guys have of what, I, what I've done, and that one's hung here before. And gotten a lot of response. I've shown it other places as well. It's, it's gotten some pretty good reactions. So I wrote it back. Um, and it's one of the largest pieces I did with pastel pencils. Um, these two are more recent. Uh, these are my wife's hydrangeas. She pestered me to paint her hydrangeas many, many times. And she, finally, she took a picture of them kind of on a really misty, foggy morning. It's kind of a cool look so i did that that's more with soft pastels uh, the birds a mixture of uh, soft and, and the pastel pencils and that was a we see herons all, all the time on the river shore we kayak and that's just kind of crap that one's a little bluer than most of them we see so these two uh pastels are uh, were cloud studies and trying to learn to do clouds that look like actual clouds and be somewhat dramatic 
Uh, the first one was actually just a study I did in that process. I posted it on Facebook and it got so many positive comments, I decided to go ahead and frame it and show it. This was the next one I did. I kind of liked the way it turned out and uh, uh, just thought I would, I think it's worthy of showing. Uh, these two seascapes, I've done quite a few seascapes. I've got some Nesca one. Uh, this one's down Carmel by the Sea in that area. And this one was an attempt to create that translucent wave look that uh, sometimes pretty hard to get with pastels. They're kind of difficult to work with that way. So, uh, but it came out okay. So. I have a couple of friends that paint with acrylics and oils that are constantly telling me you have to try it. So I finally caved one day and bought some acrylics. And what I discovered is unlike dry media, where I can get up and go have a cup of coffee and nothing changes, I can leave it for hours or days. It was just fine when I came back. I discovered you buy new brushes if you do that with acrylic. but. In the, in the process of learning, I discovered that there are some things I can do with acrylics I couldn't do with others. Uh, this is one of the largest acrylics I've probably ever done. It's of a little coffee shop in Tacoma where my son lives and he's taken us there a couple times. Just kind of this window is actually inside their entry. You walk in and then you enter a door that's farther down, but it was just such a neat picture to see everybody inside uh, sharing with one another before you actually enter the building. Had fun painting that. I painted it, I think, a 9 by 12 first and liked it so much I painted it again larger. So, and if you guys happen to want the 9 by 12, we can find that one. Well, as I said, with the, with the seascapes, I was trying to learn how to paint waves. So I did that with the cloudscapes. I was trying to learn how to paint clouds. Uh, the hand series just kind of developed after I did the first one that I really liked. Um, usually I just look for something that, that intrigues me or excites me in some fashion, so I, I make that effort to do it. Uh, these two are my granddaughter, so that was easy for me, that's a good subject for me to paint. Of course, you don't see her face in either painting, uh, but uh, this one was just something that kind of struck me from my childhood. I used to skate in my dad's old skates, and they were kind of like those. Uh, but. Uh, other things, uh, one back here with a sled on it that was kind of reminds me of going to Grandpa's farm and sledding on his place when we were kids. Uh, the coffee shop, like I said, I had a couple of kids that were baristas. It's just kind of whatever comes to mind. It looks like it would be fun to paint. That's where I go with it.